I got invited to visit a dairy farm in Ireland, which is just an opportunity you can pass up. There's nothing I love more than traveling, especially abroad, and I'm very lucky to have gotten to do quite a bit of it. But I felt like this trip was going to be different than most because I was going to get to live with the family and experience the culture through them. I obviously feel at home on a farm, but I know nothing about cows. I was really wanting to do my best to impress these people who were so nice to let me stay at their place. And I figured I could at least show them I knew how to work. And then I hoped that would cover up my ignorance about the uh, large four-legged beasts roaming around their house. I told them to have some jobs ready for me to help out on around the farm. The first job I got to help out with was rebuilding this concrete wall that David here accidentally backed into with the tractor after I think having one too many whiskeys the night before, which he wouldn't admit. We got a drill. Oh, the grinder. We get the grinder. Okay. The grinder be the right job. The edge of this wall was a gate opening, so there needed to be a place for the gate latch to slide into the wall. We thought we'd use a loose metal post for this. So when David hits this again in the future, we can just take it out and stick a new piece of metal in its place. And I won't take down the whole wall with it. I don't think it'd be too knock this over again, I think. Uh, probably not a year. Probably not a week. Is this, is this make sure I'm gone before yeah. I do, okay? Well, I'll make sure I'll make a load of things and then we're going to ask him to say, I should just take some. Justin's <laughs> back in. Yeah, Justin be back here. I asked PJ here, David's dad, if he got upset with David for back in the middle wall. And he said, yeah, he was a little upset, but he couldn't get too upset because he'd done the same thing a year before. I think they really have it out for this wall. PJ started mixing up some mortar, and we got to work laying the first stone. What were you thinking? I have a weed, handy. I'd never done anything like this before with mortar and stones, but I wasn't about to let them know that. Just gotta pretend like I knew what I was doing, right? So the shorter metal post on the left is the sleeve for the longer one to sit down into. And it was a nice tight fit, so didn't move around too much. Okay. We just kept setting stones one by one, nope. making sure they were level along the way to the best of our ability. We have a fall on rocking shoes. Can you pick it up and stick them underneath or uh, fix yeah. the next one? I learned how you can cut a block in half by hammering on a line all the way around the block, and then it yeah. easily breaks yeah. into two. Jeez, people put, put it on the other edge, I'd say. Come on, press the American girls, David. <laughs> we had to scrounge up a block of a different height so the new blocks would match up with the height of the rest of the wall. It was fun because with these people, even rebuilding a concrete wall was a whole family affair. Yeah, that's it. We brought, we brought Justin Holden to build a wall. Can't tell anybody Justin. Don't tell the parents that. I'm going to leave for a bit, Justin. I think everyone made it out at some point or another to that inspect our work. Hard. Well done, Dad. That is, that is amazing. Oh, yeah. you, 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 had, you took the wrong profession, PJ. Oh, yeah. yeah, you should have been locked there. You should have been an artist. Yeah. Yeah. Fashion. I thought we were about ready to throw the next blocks on, but apparently tea was ready, so a little break was in order. But shortly after, we were back out there to finish this thing up. Once we could overlap blocks onto the wall that was already there, it really made things a lot stronger and more sturdy. We marked the post at the height of the gate latch. Hold a little bit, okay? Huh? Okay. And then we took it up to a shop to cut out a notch in it. kind of fun and weird and foreign working on someone else's farm, having no idea what tools you have at your disposal. The only place I've ever worked is on my farm, so I thought it was great being exposed to different ideas and ways of doing things that I can take back home with me and maybe incorporate into my own farm.
I'd never milked a cow in my entire life. And I felt like this was as good an opportunity as any to check that off my list. It's really funny to me how when I set up my camera, the cows knew that it was something that was out of place and every single one of them had to stop and sip it. I spent a couple mornings helping PJ with the cows and like I said, I was really hoping to impress him and earn his respect, show him I knew how to work. The first morning I took my camera with me thinking I was going to film a little bit, but as I was walking out, I realized that it's really not the way to be impressing a dairy man when you're just messing around on the camera the whole time. So I set the camera down and left it off and forgot about it. The second morning, I thought maybe I worked hard enough the first morning to take a second here and there to hit the record button. PJ said that since I'm the guest, I gotta wear the apron. He said he was used to uh, cow mess and <laughs> didn't mind it on himself anymore. I think I did one cow in the time PJ did three. It's harder than you'd think to find a cow nipple. Maybe I should call him Teats. That sounds a little better. I think it took about five minutes to milk a cow, which gives you five minutes to think about how the rear of the cow is right at head level and can make a real mess on you if it so chooses. PJ said he knows every cow just by looking at their udder. And I found that even after working just a couple days, you really do kind of remember a couple cows that stand out or maybe a little bit more ornery than the others. Once the cows are fully milked, we moved the suction tubes from one side of the parlor to the other and got the next cows milking. PJ put some disinfectant on the milk dudders and then we filed those cows out of there before bringing in some new ones that are waiting just behind them. Once all the cows were milked, it was feeding time, and they were sure to let us know that. I think, if I got this right, the cows get most of their food from the grass pastures, but he gives them a bucket of feed every morning because there's some nutrients in it that they don't get just from the grass. One thing I found myself subconsciously doing was keeping tabs on where the bull in the group was. Man, he was a big boy. I was told he was pretty docile, but I was going to go ahead and give him some space. I'll go ahead and let PJ milk him. It kind of surprised me how quickly I was able to start thinking of this stuff as just mud and not what it actually was. Maybe I'll be ready to give up the apron come day three. Now that the cows are all milked and fed, it was back to the pasture farm. I was out walking around on my own taking some pictures when the space van pulled up. The whole family loaded in it. And Marley leaned out the window and said, Justin, we're gonna go shift some cows, jump in. To be honest, I had no idea what shifting cows meant. I learned previously in the trip that shifting was also Irish slang for making out. And I didn't think we were gonna go make out with cows, but I wasn't ready to rule it out just yet. I had gotten much more personal and intimate with cows than I thought I ever would have in my life on this trip. It turned out we were moving some steers from one field to another, right down the country road. Which is why I was all hands on deck. A couple cousins and family friends were also recruited to help block driveways and make sure the cows stayed pointed in the right direction. And Mama Irish brought up the rear of the parade in the space van. Luckily, most of the roads around here are lined by tall hedges on both sides. But any chance they got to take a detour from their assigned path, they definitely took advantage of. The steers would tend to get worked up at times and had to be slowed down and gotten under control. It was really impressive to me seeing all the family members working together and knowing their part to keep the animals moving down the road safely. We were all huffing and puffing by the time we made it to their new field. 
think it was about a mile we covered. It was a rewarding sight seeing the steers run through the pasture, kicking their heels up. You could tell they were happy to be in this new field with lots of green grass for them to eat. I was telling them that I was really excited that I'll be able to get the brag that I ran with the bulls now. I just think I'll keep it a secret that the bulls I ran with were the tame, docile ones in Ireland and not the bloodthirsty ones you see in Pamplona. This ended up being such a great memory to finish out an even more amazing trip. I milked my first cow. I drank a few too many pints of Guinness. I went to my first hurling match. I heard some amazing live Irish music. I learned how to lay concrete blocks. I also learned the multiple meanings of what shifting meant. And best of all, I got to meet a very welcoming and loving family. I really hope I get to keep going back. At least I can count on David to knock over the wall again. I think that's as good an excuse as any to grab a trowel and jump on a plane back to that amazing place in rural Ireland. <laughs>